What is up, friends and fans? Jake here today, and we are combing through the latest Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope trailer for every little nugget of information we can find, so let's dive right in. Right off the bat here, we are seeing red coins are returning to Mario Plus Rabbids. Now, in Kingdom Battle, they would only appear after running through a red ring, and if all eight coins were collected within a certain amount of time, you would earn a new weapon for your team. The fact that the coins are just hanging out here alone makes me think that a red ring has not been activated, and their function is different in Sparks of Hope. That said, we can see a red ring appearing later in the video here, so maybe it's all just the same. Now similarly, if you look off to the side here, there are a bunch of green coins floating in the air. Given that they are arranged and look almost identical to the green coins in New Super Mario Bros. U, their function is likely similar, awarding an extra life or power up if a set of green coins are collected. Okay, now if gold, green, and red coins were not enough for you, there are also blue coins activated by pressing on a P cube. We can be pretty sure that these aren't their own currency and instead have a more bespoke reward for completing their collecting challenge like they do in other games. Next, throughout the gameplay video, we can spot these white flags adorned with different icons. It's unclear exactly what purpose these flags serve, but I'm thinking they're save points. See, in Kingdom Battle, saves would happen automatically between chapters and after every battle. But given that battles are no longer placed behind gates directly in the overworld and are now player initiated, I imagine that these flags will serve as little checkpoints activated either upon approach or possibly after clearing an area of bad guys. Either way, the flags definitely change after being activated as we can see the flag in this screenshot is glowing whereas the others have yet to be turned on. The icons on the flag also appear to correspond with the theme of the given world, an acorn theme for this world with autumnal vibes and a snowflake for the icy world. Both icons can be seen as repeated motifs throughout each of the worlds. Since the game's reveal, we've seen this specific character several times. They've even been given a spotlight in cutscenes, but it looks like this character is actually more of a standard enemy than it initially seemed. For one, we see them in a variety of locations rather than one you would expect from a boss or a mini boss battle. And two, we catch a glimpse of two of these characters together on one map. And three, we can see an icy variation of this same enemy. So it's really less of a character and more of a new enemy type we will have to deal with. Okay, here's a fun one. In this planet hopping adventure, Mario has a spaceship and it has rabbit ears on it, because everything has to in this galaxy. It's the law. Next, I want to draw your attention to the spiral logo. It is the same shape we see obscuring Cursa's face, and throughout the trailer, we see this logo on various rocks and objects. Now, by my account, every Cursa block, let's call them that, looks breakable, with the rocks having easy to see cracks, so there's got to be a way to break them. It could be linked to activating the flags we discussed earlier, but I doubt it's like a character-specific ability, given that you can select from any three of the nine characters to make up your party. Maybe cursive blocks are destroyed by simply cleaning up the area or solving a puzzle. We'll have to keep our eyes on it. Speaking of clearing up an area, this green pipe is covered in cursa goo. But in line with the logic of what we have discussed so far, it looks like areas do need to be cleared in some way before you can access everything. And I'm guessing that these warp pipes will be a way to quickly traverse around a given world to revisit battles or complete side quests. Like this one, where a fisher rabbit needs you to put fish back in his fountain. Next, I want to direct your attention to this castle. Given its particular crown and star motifs, it's pretty clear that this place is related to Rosalina somehow. The elements just match up too well. But given the addition of the bunny ears where the crowns are, I'd say it is just as likely that this is rabid Rosalina's home and not at all related to the yet-to-be-seen human Rosalina. By matching up these snowflake panes on the windows, it's clear to see when in the trailers we are inside this palace. We even get a look at a battle arena when a fight is initiated from within the castle. You can see that the books here match up with the stack of books in the cutscene of rabid Rosalina too. Which makes me think even more that this is either where we meet her or or simply a location that we help her save. And listen, this castle definitely needs saving. 
in addition to being covered with cursa goo at various points, we see at the end of the trailer that inside lurks this crazy looking ghost. Now given the villainous look in its eyes and how it's peering at Mario and gang talking to a friendly rabbit, could this creature be a villain aligned with cursa? Buckle up, it's conspiracy time. So by now you must have seen our video discussing the idea that Cursa is a corrupted Rosalina. So wouldn't it make sense that if Cursa created a ghost to enlist in villainous activities, it would in some way resemble its creator, maintaining some of their essence? Well, I don't know about you all, but I think that this ghost rabbit shares a striking similarity to Rosalina. Further, in the prior video, I theorized that somehow, maybe human Rosalina has fused with whoever the mysterious rabbit Edge is counterpart is. And you know who else this ghost looks like? That's right, Edge! Just look at those lashes! so pointy. But be sure to let me know in the comments if you think I'm onto something or if it's just going to end up being a random ghost named, I don't know, Janice. Next, if you watch the trailer, you probably noticed that there is a change in the voices for the main cast of Rabbids. Instead of the usual blahs and screams, our Rabbids now have noticeably unique voices. We get these bits and murmurs throughout the trailer, and honestly, I think they sound hilarious. All right, I mentioned before that battles are now initiated from the overworld. Well, here for a second, we can see a babam with an icon indicating its level. I think it's the level because it's identical to the symbol that we can see on the post-battle level up screen. Now, before we move into gameplay details, I want to remind everyone that there are nine playable characters and we can clearly see them all in the trailers. For anyone holding out hope for Yoshi and Rabid Yoshi to return, I would hate to dash your sparks of hope, but in an interview with Nintendo, Duo associate producer Christina Nava said that our favorite dinosaur buddies will not be returning for the sequel. They will be missed. But it looks like the nine characters that we do have are more unique than ever from a gameplay standpoint. Everyone has a new default weapon type that grants them a unique mechanic. For example, Mario dual wields and can zap enemies in different directions, Luigi is a natural sniper with his bow and arrow, and Bowser has this huge area of effect with these bombastic attacks. But my favorite so far is Rabid Mario. He's got these melee gauntlets, giving him a completely different fighting style from Kingdom Battle. Another neat gameplay change is the addition of these Luma Rabid hybrids called Sparks. It looks like these Sparks can be freely equipped between characters and offer at least two unique bonuses. First, we can see that sparks apply a unique effect to attacks corresponding with whatever elemental type they are. We can quickly see here that it looks like the burn effect from Kingdom Battle is returning, likely causing an enemy afflicted with it to frantically run around trying to put out the fire. But given the variety of sparks on display, it seems that a whole new swath of effects will be appearing in Sparks of Hope. We see Bowser equipped with a spark surrounded by shields, likely affording him some type of defensive armor. We also see an electric effect apply some kind of zapping stun, and then a water spark pushes enemies away with this big splash. There are a bunch of different colored sparks in the trailers, and we have no idea what other effects could be out there. Now, outside of weapon effects, it looks like sparks also have the ability to activate some kind of super attack. This ice spark attack that we get a look at looks really powerful. And with that, we are ready to wrap up this video. I don't even want to talk about that big, scary, rabid pig thing. I don't like it. It's freaking me out. We're wrapping things up. That is it. So for everything else Mario Rabbids or any other game, you are already in the right place. So just let us explain. I'm Jake, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.